Hi, Carolyn Logue with the Puyallup Sumner Chamber of Commerce. Um, sitting with me is Melanie Stambaugh. Melanie is running for re-election to the State House of Representatives, District 25, Position 1. Melanie, thank you for coming. I just have a few questions, and Great. so I'll start off right away. Um, what do you think is the most important issue in your race? I believe the most important issue is education. And that is ensuring that as a state, we are fulfilling our paramount duty of funding education in an equitable fashion and making sure we have a quality education for students across our state. I serve on education leadership, and over the past two years, we were able to put an additional $4.5 billion into education. That makes the last two years the largest investment in education funding in state history. I'm very proud about that. In addition, we've, we've made significant um, strides. I was uh, a help and a vote towards um, closing the opportunity gap so students from all backgrounds have equal access to success and education opportunity in the classroom, as well as um, the main co-sponsor for the Homeless Student Stability Act, providing resources for students and families who are experiencing homelessness in their schools. Additionally, um, I was just appointed actually to the School Safety Summit, uh, which will make sure that our schools are safe promoting policies that um, put safety at the forefront, ensuring students really do have access to um, classrooms that they feel safe and can learn in. We've made good strides. We have more to do um, in looking at the next two years. We will look at increased funding for education. Um, one piece I think is important that we increase the accountability for how those state dollars are used in our local schools. Okay, and then how specifically would you support the business community in the legislature? Well, as the owner of two small businesses, I understand the challenges of uh, the business community quite intimately. So when you look at business in our state, 98% of businesses are small businesses, mm -hmm. and they employ over half of the Washington workforce. So we need to make sure that policies support growing businesses. And there are two pieces that I've been working on the last two years and will continue to work on. Um, the first is with the B&O tax, changing the structure. The main piece is changing so that we don't tax on gross receipts. That is a huge inhibitor to business, especially um, inventory holding, which impacts construction and building in our state. The second piece um, is ensuring that businesses have an even playing field. I've had numerous businesses and also personal experience with um, the inequity of, of employer and employee versus independent contractor. And we don't need to add regulations to our business structure, but we need to make sure that we're enforcing the current uh, regulations so that businesses can operate in an even way. Um, one of my businesses, we uh, build confidence professional development programs. The other, we install real estate cross-arm signs. These are two very different business models, and so I understand the diversity of business in our state. I've had an open door policy the last two years and will continue to do so for all community members and also all businesses so they can share in their industry what specific needs and opportunities they have and we can craft policies so that they can thrive. Okay. And we do have an initiative on the ballot this November 1433 that would raise the state's minimum wage and establish mandatory um, paid sick leave. Mm -hmm. The city of Tacoma has also enacted an ordinance recently to do the same thing. What is your position on the minimum wage and paid leave? Well, I'll first begin by saying I think this discussion needs to be broadened to include just the access to jobs. We need to make sure that our policies focus on increasing our economy, which then increases job opportunities. I believe that wages are connected to jobs, which is connected to the economy. Um, when I look at increasing the minimum wage, one of my concerns is um, that I think a really great model is the apprenticeship model, where you're not just increasing wages, but you're actually increasing wages while you increase skill. Mm -hmm. I think that is something we need to focus on, and this initiative does not include that element. Um, I believe that employers want the best for their employees, and as an employer that does pay $15 an hour, I understand the strain that especially small businesses could be put under with this initiative. Um, not only are small businesses having to pay their employee, but they also have your state and federal taxes, your unemployment insurance, your workers comp, um, and looking at paid leave, that is an additional strain that could push businesses over the edge. I think we need careful consideration of this, and there are multiple options, um, especially in paid leave, that could look at just an employee paid portion of the paid leave or a combined employee-employer. I think we need to explore those options to make sure we're not actually reducing job opportunities in the state, but expanding them. Okay. What tax increase would you support, if any? So this is um, a very important thing going into this upcoming session. 
When I reflect on the last two years, in 2015, I did support the transportation infrastructure package, which included tax increases. I was able to do so because of a few pieces. One is that you knew the outcomes. We were going to be able to fund the completion of Highway 167, the expansion of I-5 and GBLM, two local important projects for our area. In addition, there were protections on those tax dollars and how they were spent. Reforms in their spending and priorities at Washington um, State Department of Transportation, as well as protections on how those gas tax dollars are used. In looking at any increased revenue, we need to make sure that we make sure those um, those dollars have an outcome, a specific outcome, mm -hmm. and we have protections to do so. Um, I'm looking and, and a supporter of the levy swap, and I know here in the 25th district that's actually a tax reduction, but across the state, especially for some of our, our, um, some of our rural areas, that is a tax increase. One thing I like about that is there are protections that that funding would go specifically to schools, and I think investing in education is most important, um, but I, I would be open to looking at other uh, increases specifically around mental health and, and transportation. Okay. And then finally, um, are there any specific jobs that you would bring to this community and how would you do that? I think it's important that we have a wide variety of job opportunities and that's for all skills and abilities. I think this starts in our education system, increasing our career and technical education opportunities for schools. Um, I was a supporter of increased funding the last um, two years so that students who um, don't see themselves going to a four-year university still have an opportunity. Um, I know that when passing the transportation infrastructure package, we were able to bring new businesses to our local area like FedEx, who located downtown Fife. We need to make sure that our policies um, encourage businesses to come and that our education system encourages um, diverse opportunities for students so that you connect those uh, local jobs with the local skill um, for, for that connection. Okay, thank you for very much for coming yes, today. Thank you. Thank you.